The next speaker is Professor Xiaoming Wang from Florida State University. Today he is talking about coupling of flow in the conduit and the flow in the porous media. Well, thank you. Uh, first of uh, I would like to thank the organizers, especially uh, Elena, uh, who is somewhere, I hope, but, uh, for the invitation. It's great to be uh, back in, uh, in Rio. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, so uh, I'll talk about uh, 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 coupling of flows in, uh, in conduit and then in, and in, uh, in prose media. Uh, uh, so why do we care about uh, the coupling of fluids in conduit and, and in prose media? It's because of applications, for instance. Uh, uh, here are a few applications that I listed, and uh, here, here are a few pictures of, uh, that illustrate the, these applications. Uh, here is a so-called cast uh, landscape. Uh, this ca kind of cast landscape is very common in, uh, in uh, Eagle's hometown, and uh, uh, it's also quite common in where I live. So you see the, the, the features here are you have uh, a, a limestone which forms the porous media, but you also have caves and conduits of, uh, 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 within. So waters flow through the, the, the limestone and also uh, flow through uh, the caves and the, uh, uh, and the conduits. You, can, you say, well, well, maybe we should just treat these things separately. Right? Why should we worry about uh, coupling these things? Oh, here is an example of, uh, from France. This is one of the uh, most uh, well-known site of, uh, of cast of uh, uh, Minerve. And this is of a site of, uh, in Brazil. Apparently, cast is not of, uh, common in, uh, in uh, uh, Brazil. So why do we care? Uh, because of, uh, uh, you know, uh, think, uh, for, for situations like this, say uh, where I live, uh, uh, we have springs, uh, beautiful springs like Wakala Spring, which Charlie has seen. Uh, 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 Peter uh, didn't uh, go there, but, so next time you should see, uh, we have a very beautiful spring over there. And we have sinkholes, uh, unfortunately, and the sinkholes usually are connected to the spring and uh, through an uh, underground river or conduit. Uh, when it rains, uh, you know, it carries the fertilizers that we apply to our lawn uh, going to, uh, through the uh, sinkhole and going to the spring. Uh, you thought, you know, this is only the, the only time that's bad because, you know, the, the, you have, when it rains. But in fact, there is a secondary uh, effect. Uh, when it rains, the pressure in the conduit is higher than the pressure in the surrounding uh, prose media. So therefore, there is a secondary flow that goes from the conduit into uh, the surrounding uh, prose media. With that, it also drives the contaminants, uh, uh, you know, the fertilizers, among others, uh, going from, uh, you know, the conduit into, into uh, uh, the surrounding prose media. Then uh, in the opposite of the, uh, uh, situation, when, when there's a drought season, then uh, uh, the water table uh, at the sinkhole becomes uh, low, uh, lower than, uh, uh, in, than, than uh, the, the, the rain season then uh, the pressure in the conduit, in fact, uh, uh, lower, becomes lower than the surrounding uh, porous media. Then the, 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 uh, there is a secondary uh, uh, flow that is in the opposite direction. Opposite direction in the sense flow goes from uh, uh, porous media into the conduit. So therefore, you know, whatever the bad things that uh, was driven into the porous media in the, in the uh, flood season, comes out. And that's exactly what happens of, uh, at Wakala Spring, the spring that uh, I'm very proud of. Uh, you always see a lot of, of extra nutrients of, uh, like of, uh, nitrogen uh, and then of, uh, the water weeds were overgrown over there. So you have to apply pests of uh, herbicide to, to kill those things, addition of chemicals. So we, we, they, they, these kind of coppering at least uh, for this kind of situation, it's very important. And then uh, there are uh, also other situations, for instance, uh, 
proton exchange membrane uh, fuel cell technology also involves uh, flows in conduit, you know, hydrogen here, oxygen here, then, uh, uh, and also flow uh, through uh, prose media. Uh, these, are the, 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 these are the, uh, the prose media. This one is of, a, of out of proportion. It's supposedly to be a, pl a platinum sheet, or nowadays it's, of a, it's a carbon nanotube of a sheet. So, uh, uh, so I hope I convinced you that uh, uh, it is uh, important to, to think about uh, 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 coupling flows in conduit and the flows in, uh, in prose media. Okay, so how do, we, how do we do that? So that's the, the, the most of, uh, important question, at least of, uh, to me. Uh, uh, more importantly, uh, you know, uh, uh, more specifically, uh, what would be the interface boundary condition? By interface here, I mean uh, the interface between the prose media and the conduit. Okay, it's not about the interface between uh, two fluids. Later on, I'll, I'll talk about the interface uh, between two fluids. And uh, once uh, uh, you have these things, uh, uh, can you validate uh, these models? And can you design uh, uh, fast, accurate, uh, uh, and efficient numerical methods uh, for these models? So let's look at the, uh, the problem in a simple setting, a uh, single phase model. Okay, so uh, for single phase model, let's say this is the geometric of a setting. You have underground river or conduit, and this is your surrounding matrix. And in the matrix, could, uh, there could be a, a VAG as well, empty space. So here you have your free flow, free flow, then in the matrix, supposedly would be a uh, 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 Darcy flow. And this is the interface, the conduit, matrix, this is part of the interface. VAG, matrix, also part of the interface. And N is the unit autonormal, omega M is the matrix, so omega C is the conduit. So uh, the governing equations, well, it's all uh, standard classical thing. Uh, uh, in the conduit of VAG, we use the Navier-Stokes, or because it's ground, uh, underground, usually the, uh, the velocity is not very high, so uh, uh, Stokes flow most of the time. Incompressible, uh, uh, our favorite uh, no-slip boundary condition. Uh, I, I retained these two terms for a moment because uh, it is important to notice that uh, uh, energy is dissipated with a rate of, of, uh, of this. So it's of, a, it's of a viscosity times the, uh, the square of the rate of uh, strain tensor integrated uh, uh, over the domain. So this is uh, the energy dissipation rate uh, for flows of, uh, in, a, in a conduit. Right? So that's very well known. Likewise, if you just uh, uh, think about a matrix, uh, the flow is very well known as well, it's Darcy. Uh, several people talked about these things. It's incompressible. Notation is here. Again, uh, I, uh, before I drop this time derivative term, uh, you know, I retained it for a moment for the reason that uh, uh, from here I can see that uh, energy is dissipated uh, in the Darcy equation as well. And this is the rate of dissipation. Eta is again of a viscosity. Pi is the so-called permeability uh, for, uh, of the conduit. Permeability says, tells you how easy uh, uh, it is for the fluid to flow through uh, the prose media. So it's a material property, just like of, uh, the viscosity. So this is, this is that. So we do know uh, 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 the governing equations in each region. Uh, how about the uh, 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 interface boundary conditions? Well, one of them is very easy. I'm sorry? Wasn't the porosity in the boson the dissipation rate? Uh, uh, the porosity, yes. So porosity is related to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to the permeability. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So, th yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Yeah. That's why uh, it's there. Uh, 
uh, here right now it's just one parameter. Yeah, it's, it's an effective one. Yeah. So uh, uh, in terms of coupling these two systems, of, uh, uh, one of them is of, uh, easy. You you want to have conservation of mass. So whatever flows out of the conduit must go into uh, uh, the matrix. So normal velocity must be uh, continuous, easy. Uh, what are the other ones? So, uh, well, uh, one of them, uh, the simplified version we, we saw uh, in the last uh, uh, talk and a few other talks, it's Navier's uh, slip boundary condition. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, is, uh, this Navier or Beaver Joseph Softman Jones interface boundary condition uh, is a simplified version of the uh, so called Beaver Joseph of, uh, interface boundary condition. So, what, what the, uh, this uh, Beaver Joseph of, uh, 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 interface boundary condition say? It says, you know, uh, since fluid flows in the conduit and the flu fluid flows in the matrix, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Darcy's equation, you cannot uh, uh, specify both the tangential and the, uh, the normal. So, well, you know, in a sense, it's over, uh, uh, underdetermined when you compare to the Navier-Stokes in terms of boundary condition. Therefore, you usually do not anticipate uh, the tangential velocity to be continuous, although we do know the normal velocity should, should be continuous for uh, con uh, conservation of mass. Once you have a jump in, uh, in velocity, uh, you, you think there should be a, a, a friction force. And this is what they say. You know, uh, uh, there is a friction force which is proportional to the to the, the jumping in, in tangential velocity. But this is not a uh, easy boundary condition to work with, because we know uh, for Darcy equation it's incompressible, uh, and we can only specify the normal uh, component, not tangential. So uh, not. Uh, not of, uh, particularly uh, comfortable with that. There are special situations that we can deal with it, but in general, it's not. So Softman suggested, that, well, let's drop this because anyway, the tangential velocity in in, in matrix should be much smaller than uh, than uh, that in the in the conduit. So let's drop the law or the term, and the, they arrive at this, and this is the uh, so-called the Beavers Joseph Softman Jones. The, uh, interface boundary condition, it's exactly the Navier-Stokes, uh, I mean, the Navier interface boundary condition. And from here, you can also see, you know, when the porosity or permeability of the, uh, of the matrix goes to zero, you recover uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, no, classical no-slip boundary condition because when pi, which is the permeability, which is a tensor in general, uh, you know, uh, if it goes to zero, then uh, this term drops. You just uh, have uh, uh, have the velocity to be to be zero. So uh, with this, we have uh, uh, another interface boundary condition, but that's not enough because of, uh, when we couple them, you just count fingers. Of, uh, that's not of, uh, uh, enough of them. Uh, and then uh, 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 the other boundary condition that people uh, that's needed, people propose in different ways. Of, uh, so one of them says of. Uh, Maybe we should balance the, uh, the pressure, you know, in the counter in the matrix. That seems normal. I mean, seems natural. The other way, uh, uh, way of saying it, it says the balance of normal force. You know, you have different ways of saying these things. In, uh, the, in the conduit, you, you, you have the normal component of a normal stress. Then uh, in the porous media, you have the pressure. So, so you balance these two. So which one is the right one? Uh, and the uh, uh, people working in ground uh, water flows, they, they use different things. So, but, you know, there are uh, rigorous mathematics, fortunately. So, uh, uh, Jagger and uh, McCallick uh, studied a very uh, special case uh, of, you know, uh, flows uh, v with very low velocity, periodic setting, uh, flat interface. Then uh, uh, the, the, the boundary condition that uh, they recover, I mean, starting from Stokes flow, then you take uh, the homogenization limit. You, you, uh, what they recover is the balance of normal stress. It's not uh, the, the balance of uh, uh, pressure. 
So this is very nice, gives us a, a, a comfort that the, you know, uh, the balance of normal uh, force is probably the right one to use. But in applications, you know, uh, 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 you, you hardly get a uh, flat uh, uh, geometry or periodic setting. So we, 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 we wonder uh, whether we can derive these things in a simpler, more systematic fashion. So before I move on to that, the, you know, there are a lot of recent numerical works of, uh, uh, on, on these models. And uh, I'll skip the details of these things. But you know, uh, people doing experiment and people doing a uh, uh, numerical simulation, you see the double hump, of, uh, and they have a reasonably good match. So let me move on to uh, derivation of interface boundary conditions using a, a different method, more robust, but more, more ad hoc empirical. This is the uh, Helmholtz principle. Uh, uh, so uh, Helmholtz says the following, you know, uh, for flows near a steady state of, uh, uh, or, or at steady state, uh, what it does is uh, try to minimize the, uh, the rate of energy dissipation. So it's smart. It doesn't want to waste the energy. So if you apply this principle to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to, uh, uh, to viscous flows, then uh, what you end up with is exactly uh, the, uh, the uh, Stokes equation. This trick, I, I think the first time I saw it was Peter when he came to Indiana for uh, for uh, for uh, uh, Chaplin's uh, uh, birthday, so uh, that's the first time I learned the you know, pressure is of a Lagrangian multiplier. But then later on, I learned it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ugly word. You don't want to say that. <laughs> but for mathematician, uh, uh, pressure is the Lagrangian multiplier for the uh, for the incompressible constraint. So it works very well, right? Likewise, you can you can apply Helmholtz of our principle. Uh, to flows in, in prose media, and you recover uh, uh, the Darcy flow, okay? Now, how about our coupled system, flows in conduit and flow in, in prose media? So, uh, uh, what would be the, the, the rate of energy dissipation? Well, uh, energy, dis uh, 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 energy gets dissipated in the conduit. This is the rate of energy dissipation that we, we agree. Uh, energy also gets dissipated in the, uh, in the uh, uh, matrix. Uh, uh, this is the energy dissipation rate associated with the, uh, with the Darcy flow. On top of that, because of, uh, uh, there is an interface and there is a uh, potentially gap of, of a tangential velocity, uh, you, you lose energy because of frictions uh, uh, at the interface. And how do you model that? This is one of the crudest way of modeling it. Uh, well, constant times uh, 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 the, the velocity. Really, it should be velocity gap, tangential velocity gap square. But you know, we are trying to avoid the difficulty. And we are dropping the law of the term. So this is the uh, energy dissipation rate. If you agree with this, then you just apply the machinery, and if you do the work. It turns out that uh, we discover, recover exactly the Stokes equation in a conduit, Darcy's equation uh, in, in the prose media, uh, uh, this uh, Beaver Joseph Safman Jones interface boundary condition, or uh, you, you, if you like, called the Navier uh, slip con condition. And this balance of a uh, uh, normal force. Okay, so uh, so this one, you know, if you agree Helmholtz is correct, then it can apply to whatever geometry. So it works. Okay. All right. So uh, so in the single phase, uh, we see that uh, uh, Helmholtz uh, uh, minimization, uh, minimal dissipation principle works very well. Uh, we can recover, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, things that they're derived more rigorously, and we also have numerics. So, uh, but for, for some of the applications, uh, we, we have two-phase flows. For instance, of a flow in, of a, in, of a, in, of a, in, a, in a cast. So what the two-phase would be water and, of a, and air. And we also have uh, two-phase flows like, uh, 
like in the uh, proton uh, uh, exchange membrane, in that case, of, uh, uh, in fact, uh, three, case, uh, three phases, you have of, uh, 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 gas, water, and uh, mixture. Okay. So we want to study uh, two-phase flows. So how do we do that? So we have seen of, uh, uh, several talks of uh, 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 sharp interface models. Uh, this morning's of, uh, talk by uh, Diego uh, is one of them. So we here uh, uh, adopt a different approach, the so-called uh, uh, diffuse interface model. So in Diego's talk, he says, of, uh, you know, two-phase, it's just a black and a white. So uh, uh, if you have water and oil, they don't mix at all, okay? So it's black and white. So what we adopt here is a more liberal approach says, uh, uh, says uh, well, well, essentially, these two guys cannot uh, mix with each other, oil and water. But at uh, you know, this sort of interface place, they do mix a little bit. So if you look at uh, the volume fraction or uh, density uh, material fraction, uh, it goes between not just uh, uh, suddenly from black to white. There's a gray uh, area. Okay, then uh, you can uh, have a, uh, a function phi, you call, call it phase field, uh, describe, you know, uh, 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 this black and white thing, okay? All right. And this is, of course, a not of a, a new idea, and you know, it goes back to Van der Waal, Rayleigh, uh, Laplace. And the, 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 the format that I'm going to use today uh, would be... Uh, 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 using uh, this uh, Ginsburg of uh, land of free energy. So uh, I say I have a free energy. You know, uh, uh, the first part looks like uh, this. Uh, this is a Felix of uh, uh, energy. It says it doesn't like to have variations in phi. So really, we like to mix everything, right? Uh, the best thing would be phi equals to a constant. Then I also have uh, this phobic of a uh, uh, of, uh, part. This part, if you want to minimize this, it really wants to be either one or negative one, so prefers state like uh, this. But it's a competition between these two uh, uh, with a small parameter epsilon. Then you see uh, a steady state for this thing would be something like this with a width transition layer somehow proportional uh, to, the, uh, to the small parameter epsilon. And how do, uh, do, do this phi evolve in time? Well, there are different theories. You know, uh, uh, if you look at the gradient flow uh, 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 in L2, then leads to the Allen Kahn of, uh, uh, dynamics. If you look at the gradient flow in the H, H negative of, uh, 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 norm, then it leads to a classical kahn heliot equation uh, for phase separation, uh, et cetera. So how does these things apply to, to two-phase flows of uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to the case that I'm, I am stud, uh, uh, interested in. Well, uh, it turns out again, uh, if you just uh, focus on the conduit or the vag, well, things have been done. People know this. So this is the well-known so-called kahn heliot navier stokes equation. So it's a, it's a diffuse interface model for the sharp interface of a, of a, a model. Uh, so this is the, uh, essentially the Navier-Stokes equation, except uh, now I have an additional term that looks like mu c times the, uh, the gradient of phi c. So this term is, uh, uh, is the so-called uh, elastic forcing term of, uh, related to surface tension. Because without surface tension, it doesn't work. Okay. Then this part is the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, part, except that now I have an advection term because of, uh, I have fluid flow. Therefore, uh, uh, the order parameter or the phase field is advected by the velocity. And this is the diffusion part. Mu C is called the, uh, the chemical potential. It is the, uh, the variational derivative of the, uh, the uh, uh, Ginsburg-Landau of uh, uh, free energy. Okay, and still, I assume it's incompressible. Very important. Uh, uh, other notations, 
uh, uh, um, m here, uh, the m, I can take it to be a function, but uh, most of the time uh, we treat it as constant. It's called a mobility. Tells you how easily uh, for, for, for the order primitive uh, to, to uh, spread around. Epsilon, which is of a, a small parameter of, uh, within the Ginzburg lambda of, uh, of uh, free energy, is called interfacial width. But this is sort of arbitrary of, uh, 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 of a choice, sort of like exactly like the, the Prandtl theory, uh, why the width is of, uh, exactly square root of nu uh, instead of two times square root of nu. You know, let's say. But uh, this is on the order of that. Again, uh, 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 kinetic energy in this uh, uh, diffuse interface model for two-phase flow in conduit is dissipated at a rate of this. This model has been derived by many people. Uh, 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 here are a few people and also studied by, by many. Uh, uh, and you can also take uh, the sharp interface of a, a limit which means sending the uh, parameter epsilon to zero, then you uh, uh, recover the sharp interface limit. Okay. Uh, the, the, the convergence right now, it's, uh, it's in a very weak form done by, uh, by, uh, by Abel and Roger. Uh, 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 convergence is very fold. But uh, it's not done completely. It, it, if you expect what happened, you should have uh, you should have, should have strong convergence, not just in very <laughs> Okay. So this is uh, uh, the model uh, uh, for just uh, for the conduit two phase. Okay. Well, the same thing uh, well, with uh, two phase flow in in, in prose media. So uh, in this case, uh, the model is called the uh, Kahn-Heliot Heli shell or Heli shell Kahn-Heliot or or, or uh, you know, Kahn-Heliot Darcy, you know, uh, depending on uh, where you learn these, these things. So this would be the, the, the Darcy part. Again, it has an additional elastic forcing term, a quarter wave, wave forcing term. It's incompressible. It's coupled with the, the, this uh, uh, Kahn-Heliot equation, and the, the, the order parameter is, again, advected by, uh, by fluid velocity. Uh, uh, formally, you, you can uh, see a consistency of this model with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, the sharp interface mo model, two fluid mask uh, problem that uh, Diego uh, talked about uh, 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 this morning earlier. Uh, but in this case, even a uh, 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 convergence in verifold is not done. We, know, we believe it's doable, but uh, it's not done yet, okay, let alone a, a sharp interface. But formally, it is there. Right. And this uh, uh, model uh, has been, uh, der uh, was derived at least two times. Uh, uh, these two uh, groups have uh, uh, worked on that. And uh, people have also uh, uh, worked on the, uh, the, the analysis of this model only, uh, 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 including uh, uh, Idris have, uh, worked with Lauengrab and uh, Kanzao uh, on this. <laughs> well, it's a, but the, it boils down essentially to this, right? Uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, all right. So uh, the next question is of how do we how do we couple these things? Uh, 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 how do we couple? Um, what would be the uh, interface boundary conditions? And what about the, the models that we derive? Okay, so uh, the idea here is to uh, try to use a generalization of Helmholtz of a minimal dissipation principle, and the, the vehicle that's appropriate to, uh, uh, for, for this purpose is of a Onsager's of a extremal principle. Okay, so uh, it says of a, uh, uh, for the following, uh, in the form that's appropriate for my of a, uh, application. Uh, says uh, uh, for a system uh, near equilibrium, the, configur the configuration uh, is to minimize the sum of the total energy dissipation rate and the, uh, the rate of the change of the free energy. Okay? 
Again, it sa sa essentially says fluid is smart. You know, it doesn't want to waste of, uh, uh, anything to, to dissipate more energy or you know, uh, change of, uh, the, the free energy. The original form of uh, Sager's uh, uh, extremal principle is not about free energy, it's about uh, entropy. But uh, you know, we are dealing with uh, uh, incompressible flows and also with uh, kind of type things. So uh, free energy is more uh, appropriate than, uh, the, than, than entropy. And this is the, 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 his, his work that brought him uh, the Nobel Prize because this led to the reciprocal relationship that the, was cited for his work. Okay. So uh, uh, then uh, 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 what do we do? Then we just have, uh, uh, use this recipe. I skip uh, uh, the details because I'm almost out of time. Uh, essentially, it boils down to uh, a few simple things. Uh, in the, in the uh, uh, matrix, uh, you have uh, dissipation uh, from two, uh, uh, two mechanisms. One is the, the, the mechanical dissipation it's from uh, the Darcy part. Now, because you also have chemical diffusion, so there is a, a, a chemical diffusion part. The J is the, the, is the, the chemical diffusion flux. Then uh, 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 dissipation in the conduit, there are three uh, co uh, contributions. This is the contribution from uh, 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 the mechanical part. This is the contribution from the chemical diffusion. And this is the contribution because of, uh, of the, uh, the uh, uh, tangential uh, velocity gap uh, uh, jump at the interface. OK? You have the uh, free energy, uh, free energy in the conduit. Uh, uh, so you can look at the, 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 the rate of change of the free energy. You just take the variation of derivative. Likewise, you can uh, uh, compute the rate of, of, uh, of change of free energy in the matrix. Then uh, on Sager's uh, uh, principle just says, uh, add the rate of, 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 of energy dissipation in the matrix to the rate of uh, energy dissipation in the conduit, together with the, uh, the, the, the rate of, of uh, change of, uh, of the, uh, the free energy in the matrix and the conduit, uh, minimize this, right? You, so you take the, the variational derivative with, the, with, with respect to the rate functions, which are the velocities and the chemical flux, together with the, the order parameter, uh, the time derivative on the order parameter on the boundary. Then what we, we, we recover, this is a work with uh, uh, two of my students, uh, is of, uh, the following. In the matrix, we recover exactly the Kahn-Hilliard the Darcy equation. In the, the conduit, we, re, we, we recover exactly the Kahn-Hilliard Stokes equation. You know, we won't be able to recover uh, uh, Kahn-Hilliard Navier Stokes because the principle only applies to flows near equilibrium. On top of that, we are able to recover the interfacial boundary conditions. These are the conservation of mass conserv uh, conservation, but these are so-called uh, uh, natural boundary condition coming out of this variational principle. This part again is the uh, balance of normal force in the normal component. This is part is uh, uh, again the uh, Navier or uh, the Beaver Joseph Suffman Jones interface boundary condition, and this is the uh, the, uh, the uh, continuity of chemical flux across the uh, uh, interface. Uh, this is the uh, uh, continuity of, of, uh, uh, of the uh, normal of, uh, uh, derivative of the order parameter. And uh, uh, the system that we derived, because it comes from a variational principle, naturally has an energy law. So it says if you look at the total free energy of the whole system, so free energy of the, the matrix, plus the free energy of the conduit, then it's dissipated by, by the mechanical part, the, the chemical part in the, in the matrix, mechanical part of the, in, the, in the conduit, 
chemical part uh, uh, in the uh, conduit, then the friction uh, uh, on the interface. Okay, and but you can also show it is consistent with the second law of thermodynamics, and you can generalize these things. Uh, and then, uh, the, uh, uh, then uh, you would like to know uh, whether you know the, the system is well posed, right? Uh, the two systems separate. They have a two D uh, Kahn Helia Darcy or Kahn Helia Heli shell. We know it's well posed. Uh, uh, the 2D of uh, Kahn-Helia Navier-Stokes, we also know it's well, well posed. So therefore, Kahn-Helia Stokes is well posed as well. In, uh, in the case of Kahn-Helia Stokes, we even know in 3D it's well posed. So what happened uh, 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 for the coupled system? Okay. Uh, the coupled system is not completely uh, trivial. You know, many times we, we think of, a, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you know the subsystems, you put them together, it's easy. But Charlie has shown us uh, a lot of uh, intricacies uh, when you couple simple systems. Right. Uh, this is another case, and it's sort of like, uh, you know, if you ask me for another example, would be fluid structure interaction. Okay. So you have systems that you know, but you put them together, you don't know. Uh, uh, the reason is there are different types of systems. Darcy is really a, 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 a simplification of the Stokes. And it's thrown away essentially the leading order problem. So, uh, so with that, uh, uh, with the uh, the uh, unmatch of the boundary conditions, the gap being in tangential velocity, essentially. So, how do we do this? So, the way we, we do this uh, is of, uh, 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 using uh, numerical analysis techniques. So, we discretize the uh, uh, the system in time as of a, a time discrete system of, uh, uh, well, this system, uh, I, in retrospect, I shouldn't uh, put down this system because this system is second order in time, uh, accurate, uniquely solvable, blah, blah, blah. But it looks very nice, but it's not easy to explain. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this system has uh, the, the, the uh, inherited energy principle. So what we can do is, Using uh, uh, these uh, uh, numerical methods, we can show that uh, uh, we have a global in time finite uh, uh, energy weak solutions. As long as uh, uh, the initial order parameter is in the space of H1. So this is again a uh, uh, joint work uh, with uh, uh, Han is, uh, is my, uh, one of my students. Wu is of a, how Wu is of a professor in Fudan University. So uh, what we can show is with initial data of, uh, from H1, uh, uh, the order parameter uh, is in L infinity, H1 intersect L2, H3, and of, uh, the chemical potential would be in L2, H1. The velocity of, uh, is, in, uh, is in a uh, slightly funny space. The, the velocity in the conduit of, uh, is in L2, H1. The velocity in, in matrix is in L2, L2. What the, it's a, but uh, you, know, you expect that, right? Because of the, uh, the structure of the equation. And uh, 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 the, fee, uh, the, 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 the time derivative of the order parameter is in uh, L A fifths of the, uh, the, the dual space of H1. So the way that we did it was a semi implicit time discretization. Then the, 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 the time discretized the system. The elliptic system we can show uh, using uh, Larray the short of a degree theory uh, solutions exist, and because we have taken care of the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, energy law in our discretization, so these discrete solutions still has a uh, discrete energy law, and we can uh, use the classical compactness of a uh, theory to say you know, eventually it converges. Now, how about uniqueness? We don't have a, a full answer. But if you are willing to assume a little bit more, let's say you have a solution that, uh, the, uh, that with the velocity field in L a th a thirds of H1 and uh, 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 velocity in the matrix in L a thirds of L2. So it really, it's a little bit more than two. Okay. Then uh, any weak solution must coincide 
with uh, this uh, slightly stronger solution, but we are not able to prove the existence of this. Not yet. Okay. So uh, to summarize, of, uh, uh, what I can say is of uh, on Sager's extremal principle, uh, I think can be applied to derive thermal uh, dynamically consistent phase field model for two phase flows uh, in the applications that, I've, uh, uh, that I'm interested in. We also have numerical schemes. We have some theoretical results, but uh, uh, the global in time uh, web postness is not uh, uh, settled, and there are many other questions that uh, we, we, uh, uh, we would like to answer, uh, but we haven't been able to. And that's it.